decreasing behavior through extinction. Extinction is going to cause, again, it's a, it's a decrease in, in responding. Uh, it's not punishment. It's something quite a bit different than punishment, actually. Uh, so we'll just take a look at it here. So the idea is, is that uh, a behavior is always, if a behavior is happening, it's being reinforced. Or it has been reinforced in the past. So you've got the intermittent reinforcement stuff. We've already been over the various schedules. So behavior is happening at a particular schedule. Right? Now, if we change something, then we're going to get a whole unique effect in behavior. And what we all, all we need to do, to, all we need to change is actually remove the reinforcer. So if we remove the reinforcer, for a particular behavior. That's the, that is the definition of extinction. A behavior that once was reinforced um, is now no longer being reinforced. It is being extinguished. Right? So we're going to remove that reinforcer and then the behavior is going to start to decrease in that situation. Okay, So in that context that behavior will start to decrease because the organism is learning or the person is learning that what worked for me in the past is now no longer working for me so my behavior is going to start to go down. Okay, of course there's a little more to it. Um, it never works on the first trial. Not going to happen. In fact, it gets worse on the first couple of trials, but we'll, we'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, that's next on the, on the next slide. It is a gradual decrease. Right? So this is something that uh, you know, the behavior is, let's say it's maintained at a fairly high rate, let's say up here, right? and then we're going to start extinction, behavior's going to go down, and we're going to keep extinguishing the behavior. It's going to keep going down and down and down, and eventually the probability of that response is going to diminish to zero. Now, it never really truly goes away 100%, and we'll talk about why that is here in a minute. Okay, So, let's take a look at the slide, see what's going on. Alright, so notice on the left here we've got the probability of response trials across the bottom and the extinction phase and the baseline phase and all that stuff. So, let's get our baseline in here. Okay? So, let's just look at that baseline section. I know the graph is all bumpy and stuff, that's alright, this is the way it is. Okay, So, baseline, we're relatively stable. Notice we don't have any numbers on this, that's fine. Okay. Doesn't matter the numbers at this point don't matter. So the behavior is maintaining at a fairly high rate. Okay. That's what we're assuming here with the baseline phase. It's quite a ways up the graph. And notice with the green line there, we start extinction, and the behavior gets worse. And that right here, this little spot right there, that's your extinction burst. Okay. Extinction bursts happen. They're evil, and they happen. Um, so I've got some more slides on here uh, and are coming up later here tonight to talk about the extinction burst, I do believe. Yep. And so I won't go into it in much more detail, but you notice that the, the baseline is you know, nice and stable. Then your extinction burst, that's this, this bulge right here, right? So the behavior is getting worse, the probability or the frequency of response is increasing. And then it starts to gradually decrease until we get down to the zero level. Okay? So that is extinction. Just keep in mind that the behavior is happening, so, but you're not reinforcing it. The behavior is occurring, but there's no reinforcement. Behavior occurs, no reinforcement. So here's an example where you have a lot of behavior and you don't have any reinforcers that are following that behavior. Eventually, the behavior goes away. It doesn't happen right away. So it's one of that uh, one of those things that uh, is part of the art of learning how to be a behavior manager is to realize that just as soon as you yank reinforcement, doesn't mean behavior is going to stop immediately. It takes a little while. It's like the organism has learned that I have to be persistent. In fact, persistence really is resistance to extinction. So we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, factors influencing it, control of the reinforcers. <laughs> if you don't have access to the reinforcer, if you don't have control over that reinforcer, you're never going to be able to extinguish a response. Think about it this way. Cigarette smoking produces reinforcers. We've gone over some of those in the past, but here they are again. Number one, positive reinforcers. The nicotine is added. Negative reinforcers. The uh, uh, the withdrawal feelings are de or the, with the withdrawal symptoms are decreased. The stress is decreased. We don't have control over those reinforcers. If you know, the reinforcer for smoking a cigarette is actually the nicotine, you know, let's look at the nicotine alone. The nicotine alone is delivered immediately. You don't have access to that. You can't block that nicotine. Well, you kind of can, maybe with a drug and prevent the absorption of the nicotine, but that's another issue, right? Um, so really, you can't extinguish cigarette smoking behavior. Now, uh, let's say you got a kid in your classroom and they're engaging in an inappropriate behavior, and when they do, you typically give them attention and tell them to stop. Well, it may be that your attention is reinforcing them. If, if that's what's going on, if it's your attention that's reinforcing the kid, then, well, guess what? You need to stop giving attention for inappropriate behavior. Right? Will that automatically make the kid an angel in the classroom? No, you're going to have to do other stuff. But the idea is you need to have control over the source of the reinforcers, the reinforcers themselves, in order to remove access to them. If you do not have that, 
you will not be successful within the extinction. Why? Because the definition of extinction is to remove the reinforcement. If you don't have access to that to those reinforcers, you can't you can't do extinction. In other words, other people can screw with you. <laughs> you know, you're working on an extinction procedure. You know, you got the inter the kid that's being inappropriate in the classroom, and you're trying to put in the, the behavior on extinction. Next thing you know, uh, the kid starts to act out, and the kids in the class, the other kids in the class, start laughing. Oops, they just reinforced him. Right? So you didn't have access to those reinforcers. You didn't know they were going to happen. You didn't. You, you couldn't control it. Not your fault. Not a problem either. Um, it's just something you're going to have to deal with down the road. It's just realize that other people can affect your extinction stuff. This is <laughs> uh, oftentimes what happens is that, that a learner will learn to behave in one setting in one way and something else in another way in another setting. And we'll get to those slides here eventually. That's uh, looking at stimulus control stuff. But the idea is that you know you, you can put the behavior on extinction, but you might not get rid of that behavior completely, especially across the board. It'll likely happen when you are, you know, other people will reinforce the behavior and just the person might learn not to behave inappropriately in front of you. So it doesn't, This is what I was just talking about. It doesn't generalize different environments. Right? Extinction in one context is extinction and then you go to a new environment and that other beha that, that once extinguished behavior is probably still going to persist in that other environment because the person hasn't learned that it doesn't work here. This is like swearing in front of your parents and swearing in front of grandma. Mom might get it on extinction, but uh, grandma might not, never bother, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, whatever, the kid's swearing, no big deal, okay? In order to actually implement extinction, you need to identify what the reinforcers are. And in order to truly identify a reinforcer, you need to do a functional assessment. Right? So you must ensure that the behavior there, that the reinforcer being withheld, is the one that's actually maintaining the behavior, right? So I got these MMs. So if M and M's are what's maintaining my behavior, when we do a functional behavioral assessment, I'm gonna snack on M and M here, and we do a functional behavioral assessment, well, the idea is is that um, by me eating the M and M, it might be reinforcing whatever behavior I was just doing. So if that's the case, when we can identify that, then go ahead and try to control access to the M and M's. If you can control access to the M and M's, then you'll likely decrease the particular behavior and you'll be successful. We'll start to extinguish. If you didn't do a functional assessment, you're only guessing about what behaviors are really um, uh, maintaining behavior, and, and then, then you're going to be a little bit haphazard in your application. Feel free to give it a shot, but um, it just might not be successful. I'm going to finish my M&M. &M. All right. That was good. Hopefully it reinforced me giving video lectures. <laughs> I doubt it, but we'll see. All right. Um, oftentimes when you are using extinction, what you want to do is reinforce the proper response. In fact, if you go back and watch some of those videos that I posted uh, on, uh, what are they, Nanny 911, if you watch those Nanny 911 videos, you'll see that a lot, that where the nanny's saying, okay, if the inappropriate behavior is happening, happening, ignore it, but then, so there's the extinction, ignore the inappropriate behavior, but also reinforce the appropriate behavior. That way the kid learns that this isn't working in this environment, but something else is. And that something else is, is going to give you access to those reinforcers that you once were getting for the behavior that you're now trying to extinguish. So which leads me to another point, and we'll probably come back to that here in a few minutes, but I want to hit it now. The idea is that if an inappropriate behavior is maintained by a reinforcer X, you want an appropriate behavior to take its place and be reinforced by that same reinforcer. So you're just trying to swap out behaviors. Right? And that's a really good approach to take uh, with regard to extinction. Is always extinguishing one and building up another, you'll be much more successful. Again, try to use that same reinforcer if possible. Um, that's a very natural sort of thing to do. It's not as contrived. Right? Uh, the setting is a, is a major issue here. Right? Um, you do want to, you know, so the context is an important thing. So, Think of the kid in the classroom, starts behaving inappropriately. There's all sorts of other reinforcement that's going to be available. And that's what that thing says, is minimize alternative SR, you know, stimulus that reinforces. So minimize reinforcement, other reinforcement. So if you can get control of those other kids in the class that are giving them attention, if you can get control, control of other teachers that might be giving the kid attention for inappropriate behavior, the idea is minimize other sources of reinforcement for this kiddo. Right? And, and maximize the chance that the, the behavior modifier is taking with the program. So by minimizing those other alternatives, 
uh, their sources of reinforcement and that you are now, the reinforcers that you are giving for appropriate behavior, like we talked about above, are going to be rich, they're going to be important, right? Because you've minimized access to alternative reinforcers. Right? So that's going to then maximize the chance that the, 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 the person doing the modification will stick with the program. Okay, we got to remember that the person that's doing the behavior modification program, not the student here, all right, not the not the child that's getting their behavior changed. We're talking about the person that is the behavior analyst. That behavior analyst is under all these constraints as well. Our behavior is reinforced. Our behavior is punished. So if you're trying to use extinction and you're failing at it, you'll be less likely to use extinction in the future. Makes sense, right? Why? Because you're being your because your behavior of using extinction is being extinguished. Um, so in order to put this in your toolkit, so to speak, uh, you need to be successful with it. And part of being successful with it is just minimizing access to those other reinforcers.